Do TED Talks ruin lives? <laughs> Is the power of ideas too powerful? I want to take this back to 1992. December, Christmas is rapidly approaching. That year, all I wanted was a Teenage Mutant Hero Turtle action figure set. And every time the TV ads would roll, I'd see Jeffrey the Giraffe telling us how he had millions all under one roof. <laughs> back then, age seven, I had the world at my feet. I was confident excited about everything. I had a voracious appetite for learning useless facts and over-analyzing the irrelevant. And I had a dream that one day I would work with Jeffrey <laughs> at Toys R Us. And between September 2002 and December 2002, <laughs> I worked at Toys R Us. Mission accomplished. <laughs> I could live out the rest of my days with the confidence of my seven-year-old self. There were no more mountains left to climb. Until in 2011, and I saw a TED talk by Terry Moore, which might as well have been titled, You Idiot. <laughs> Terry explains how to tie your shoelaces, something I thought I had mastered when I was seven. But I was wrong. Like a misguided fool, I'd been tying my laces in a weak knot. There I am, age 26. My whole world was flipped upside down. I mean, if seven-year-old me could be wrong about how to tie my shoelaces correctly, maybe seven-year-old me was wrong about working with Jeffrey being the high point of my life's work. I was thrown into turmoil. My head was a mess. I was questioning everything. Take the supermarket. A trip to the supermarket. We all do it, a simple trip to the supermarket. We consumers, we lovers of brands, those multi-buy offers. We experience supermarkets, but I was thrown in a tiz because I became aware of the filter bubble. All of these brands, so many options. And yet, maybe that is the problem. We're all living in our own bubble. We know the brand we love. We just keep going for them. I was reminded of this talk by Eli Pariser. In this talk, he talks about how web companies, they shape our world. They, they tailor their services to our personal tastes and preferences. So uh, we live in these, in these filter bubbles and we don't get exposed to information that could challenge or expand our world view. And this idea, this, this theory of the filter bubble, the next time I went to the supermarket, it really hit home as I walked down the aisle of baked beans. You see, I like one particular brand and product of baked beans. Always have, never really questioned it. But you see, there's loads of types of beans. You've got your Heinz beans, 400 gram, single tin. Heinz beans, four times 415 gram, multi-pack tin for when you want lots of beans, but you want to save a few pence on each unit. <laughs> You've got your Heinz beans with sausages, 415 gram tin, for when you want beans and a little bit of pork. 
You've got Heinz Beans 200 gram tin for when you want a small portion of beans, but you don't want to share, and you don't want to leave a tin open in the fridge. You've got Heinz Organic Beans for when you want beans, and you remember a friends of the earth. You've got Heinz Beans Reduced Salt and Sugar for when you want beans, but you're scared of having a heart attack. You've got Heinz barbecue beans, Heinz chili beans, Heinz curry sauce flavoured beans, and Heinz microwavable pots of beans. And I haven't even mentioned Branston. <laughs> because you've got Branston 415 gram single unit beans. Four times 400. And if they, it's, it's much like the Heinz system, where you, you, say you just want Branston instead of Heinz. Branston beans with sausages. For when you want a slightly thicker tomato sauce. Beans and a bit of pork. You've got Branston blooming big beans. <laughs> They're like normal Branston beans, but marginally bigger. You've got Weight Watchers beans, own brand beans, beans with chicken nuggets for people that want beans with soggy chicken nuggets. <laughs> Not forgetting the innovation and product development that is the resealable fridge pack. Hmm. Excellent. So as I stood in the aisle staring at this wall of beans, I was reminded of the paradox of choice, a TED talk by Barry Schwartz. In this talk, Barry Schwartz argues that excessive consumer choice leads to consumer anxiety and decision paralysis. And I knew that decision. I knew that feeling, because I couldn't make a decision, should I say. I knew I wanted to try new bean experiences but I might make a bad choice. So, I did what any self-respecting consumer would do in the 21st century. I pulled out my smartphone, and I turned to online reviews. <laughs> Heinz Beans, five stars, great idea. Heinz launched the baked bean in 1901, 115 years ago. I feel we're a little bit late <laughs> to be celebrating this product development. Maybe I want sausages with my beans. Five stars, amazing. Tell me more, Maureen. <laughs> okay. Five stars, and all she has to say is, OK. I was getting nowhere. So, Branston beans. I continued. Four stars. Jay, a fan of beans. Fantastic. <laughs> a kindred spirit. <laughs> he said, a basic product. Nothing special, but does the job. Great, because if there's nothing else I like in a bean, it's pragmatism. <laughs> What about the Heinz five beans for people who need more than one beans in their tin of beans? This is Susie. Five stars, tell me more. She said, very well wrapped. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they come in a tin. <laughs> kind, of, kind of how that works. It wasn't giving me enough. I needed more. I needed more insight, so I stuck my head into the word cloud. I collated the reviews of some popular baked bean brands. And what I discovered was that when people review beans online, they tend to use the words beans, baked, tin, sauce, and good. Not quite the insight I was after. However, when you throw sausages into the tin, things get a little weird. <laughs> Look carefully. You'll see the words Donny Brasco, Johnny Depp, and Al Pacino. <laughs> I was wondering whether I'd left Amazon and arrived at IMDb. 
Clearly, the insights just weren't doing it for me. I needed more. I needed more power. I needed more insight. I needed more analysis. I needed graphs. Here it is, the bean chart, the decisive factor in my quest for optimum bean. I took some of the most popular beans available online and compared them for number of reviews, price per kilogram, and the average star rating. In the interest of time, and to draw your eyes to the particularly important uh, piece of information, please look at the bottom line. There, making its debut in today's talk, the Suma Organic Bean. With an average star rating of 4.7 and the highest overall number of reviews, this looked like it could be the bean for me. However, it does come in as the second most expensive bean per kilogram. A fair price for a highly rated product, I thought. This is the bean for me. Fantastic. I'll buy it. It was at that point that I received a tap on the shoulder. And I was told by a lady called Linda, who worked at Sainsbury's, the store was now closed. <laughs> and I was to make my way towards the exit. <laughs> so, I left Sainsbury's, sans beans, empty handed. Which brings me back to the earlier point. Do TED Talks ruin lives? Is the power of ideas too powerful? I don't have the answers, but should a man not be able to buy beans without a bar chart? <laughs> or should we just continue to live in our own filter bubble? of beans. I'll leave you with this. There's millions, said Geoffrey, all under one roof. But choosing which aisle to walk down is a decision only you can make. Thank you. <laughs>